Hi, and welcome to the tutorial video for this week's pre-lab on comparing two means. Today, uh, we're going to show you how to use R and R Commander to check the equal variances assumption that's required for a two-sample t-test, as well as how to perform that two-sample t-test in R and R Commander. So to get started, I just have the R console open here, and per usual, we're just going to type library, open parenthesis, capital R, CMDR, close that parenthesis, and hit enter. Okay, so now we've got our commander open and we can start by loading a data set. So the data set that we're going to be working with in the tutorial video today is called PIMA and is available on Canvas. That's P-I-M-A. This data contains uh, observations from 323 uh, PIMA Indian women uh, who are at least 21 years of age living near Phoenix, Arizona. So the Pima are a people, they're a group of Native Americans uh, living in what is now central and southern uh, Arizona. And there's more information about the Pima people in a link uh, in the YouTube description. So to load the data set, we're just going to come up to data, load data set. And in my Prelab 9 folder, in my SATS250 folder, I just have Pima.r data, which I've downloaded from Canvas. And I'm going to click open here. So now you can see that Pima is the active data set, and we can come over and view the data set and see what we're working with here. Today we're going to be focusing on this BMI variable, which is the, each woman's body mass index, as well as the type variable, which describes whether or not the, the, uh, the woman has diabetes. So type is yes, if the woman does have diabetes according to World Health Organization criteria, and no, if they do not. So we can close this. Now, so we would like to compare the BMI across uh, the diabetic and non-diabetic women. But before we do that, we need to assess this equal variances assumption. So there are a few ways that we can do this. The first is by looking at some box plots and assessing the IQR based on those box plots. We can also look at numerical summaries and see if the standard deviations are similar in the, in the two groups. Or we can perform what's called Levine's test. So let's start by making a box plot. We're going to come up to graphs, box plot, and we're going to plot the BMI variable by groups. So we'll choose plot by groups, choose the type variable, click OK. In the options tab, we can choose whether or not to identify outliers. I don't particularly care for this, so I'm going to choose no. And we can provide a graph title here. So this we might say side by side box plots of BMI by diabetes status, I'll add a line break by 250 instructional team, and click OK. And now in the original R window, because I'm on Windows, in, if you're on a Mac, this will be in an XQuartz window, you can see my side-by-side -side box plots here. So I've got the No group and the Yes group, and we can look at the IQRs here. So that's Q1 to Q3, so the, or the, the width of the box. So these look pretty similar, right? It appears that these two groups have similar IQRs. We can also come back into our commander and look at sample standard deviations to assess this equal variance assumption. To do that, we're going to come to statistics, summaries, numerical summaries, choose the BMI variable, and again, summarize by groups, type OK. Click OK. And now we can see we get some numerical summaries broken out by the type variable. So in the no group, the standard sample standard deviation is 6.65. And in the yes group, the sample standard deviation is 7.46. So these are also quite similar. Remember that our rule of thumb is that the standard no standard deviation should be more than twice of the twice the other. So these are pretty similar here, which is great. The third way that we can assess the equal variances assumption is by performing what's called Levine's test. So the Levine's test has a null hypothesis that the population variances are equal. So sigma 1 squared is equal to sigma 2 squared. To perform Levine's test, we can come up to statistics. And now we're going to go down to variances and select Levine's test. Under factor, we're going to choose type. This is our grouping variable. And our response variable here is BMI. We're also going to choose center to be mean. We're going to click OK. And now this gives us a, an F statistic for Levine's test, but more importantly, a P value for Levine's test. 
Remember in this course when we're performing a Levine's test, we are always using a 10% significance level for Levine's test. So at the 10% significance level, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that the variances are equal. So we can conclude that we have equal variances in the two populations, and so we can go ahead and use a pooled independent samples t-test. So to perform that t-test, we'll come up to statistics, means, independent samples t-test, our group variable is type, and our response variable is BMI. Over in the options tab, we can specify our alternative hypothesis. So the alternative hypothesis is two-sided here. Notice that R is also telling us what the difference is. So it's computing no minus yes. This is something that's important to keep track of. The confidence level is given here. It defaults to 95%. Remember that uh, R also provides a confidence interval through all of its testing procedures. So if you wanted to change the confidence level for that interval that it's going to provide, you can do that here. We'll just leave it at 95%. And this is the question that we're most interested in. Do we assume equal variances? Well, here, uh, we can see that that equal variance assumption is satisfied. And so we can go ahead and assume equal variances here. And this is what's going to tell R to perform the pooled test. So let's click OK. You can see we, it's fairly standard test output. Here's our T statistic, negative 6 the degrees of freedom, as well as a very, very, very small p-value here, and the 95% confidence interval for that difference, no minus yes, that we asked for. So based on this p-value at the 5% significance level, we would reject the null hypothesis that mu1 is equal to mu2 and conclude that the average BMI is different between the two groups, between the, the women with diabetes and the women without. So now we can come over to our Markdown document. We'll scroll to the top and add a title. So this is Prelab 9, comparing two means. Add your name. And down at the bottom, now we can comment on this t-test, or whatever it is that you're asked to do in the assignment. I'm going to press Enter twice. Notice that I'm leaving a blank line between the last set of back ticks and here. Uh, a single line break is will not translate into a line break in the R Markdown document. You have to double space those lines if you want to start a new paragraph. So here we can say, because the p-value is less than the significance level of 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the mean BMI is different between women, PEMA women with diabetes and without diabetes. So now we can come up to File, save our Markdown file as, and in my Prelab 9 folder, I'm just going to call this prelab9.rmd. We'll save this file and click Generate Report. So now in my browser, our document has loaded, it's got a nice title, it's got some code here, our plot that we made, as well as our numerical summaries, the Levine's test, and uh, the t-test, as well as the statement that we wrote about the hypothesis test. So this HTML file is going to be what you're uploading to Canvas. So uh, in my Prelab 9 folder, um, you can see that there's an HTML file. Upload this to Canvas. Don't save anything directly from your browser. Let your GSI know if you're having any problems with this. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in lab this week.